Welcome to Roofing Road Trips with Heidi. Explore the roofing industry through the eyes of a long-term professional within the trade. Listen for insights, interviews, and exciting news in the roofing industry today. Hello and welcome to Roofing Road Trips from Roofers Coffee Shop. This is Heidi Ellsworth and today we are here to find out all things about Malco. And what is that? That's tools, that's HVAC, I mean, across metal. It is so exciting. We have the experts and um, leaders from Malco here today, Rich Benninghoff and Rebecca Talbot. Welcome to our podcast. Thanks hey. so much for having us, Heidi. We're really, really excited to be participating in our first roofing road trip episode and excited to be having another touch base with the Roofers Coffee Shop and Metal Coffee Shop audience. I love it. And Rich, welcome. Hey, Heidi. Thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. This is great. Well, let's start out with some introductions. So first off, um, Rich, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you do at Malco and Malco overall. Yep, absolutely. Um, so again, Rich Benninghoff, uh, president and CEO of, of Malco uh, Tools. I joined the company um, in 2021. It's almost uh, coming up on three years here uh, in April. Um, by way of background, kind of uh, 25-ish year career in manufacturing, um, kind of three chunks of time. The first chunk was um, commercial-oriented sales and marketing, uh, product management type work, uh, working for some national brands, uh, larger uh, you know, publicly traded national brand uh, type companies to really cut my teeth uh, in, in that uh, part of the business. And then second chunk of time kind of started to uh, pick up some general management responsibilities and running chunks of this uh, of, of business units, uh, a part of these larger organizations. And then third chunk uh, is where I'm at right now at Malco, which is kind of, um, you know, leading the, uh, the entire effort. So yeah. So yeah, that's who I am. Uh, Malco Tools, um, a great company that um, we can uh, we can spend some time talking about some of the history of the company and and some of the plans for our our future. If that sounds good. That sounds great. That sounds great. Let's get on Rebecca. If you can introduce yourself, then we'll dive into that history. Yes. Um, thank you again, Heidi. My name is Rebecca Talbot, and I am relatively new to the Malco team. I joined this June of 2023, and it's been a whirlwind excitement ever since. Um, you know, I come from a background of B2B marketing and specific uh, efforts made around branding, campaigns, promotions, as well as channel strategy. So I'm excited to bring all of that previous experience and and all of the you know years of marketing broadly uh, for many many different companies to Malco and you know hopefully building upon an already really really great company. Yeah, Rebecca, I have so enjoyed working with you in the six months. It's so fun to have out of the industry talking, sharing strategies. It's been it's been great. So let's hear a little bit about the history of Malco. So Rich, maybe you can start us off. Yeah, thanks. Um, so Malco, uh, coming up on 75 years um, uh, as a company, started in 1950. Um, our founding father uh, is a gentleman by the name of Mark Keemer. Um, and Mark um, was a young steel salesman uh, back in 1950. He was uh, uh, an inventor type, pioneer type uh, person and and uh, was working uh, in, the, like I said, steel business in Back in the 1950s, the sheet metal was a brand new product um, that people were working with. And um, so Mark, um, being who he is, um, decided that he wanted to um, help the industry and the folks that were working with that sheet metal product in the industry and started to design and and develop some tools um, to work with sheet metal to make their jobs more efficient and safer. Uh, And so the the uh, first couple of tools that came out of the uh, Mark Keemer's brain, I guess, is uh, the are known today as a crimper and a seamer and, uh, yeah. you know, used a lot, frankly, in a very similar design today than what uh, he designed back in 1950. And so, and so 50 through the fifties and sixties, um, you know, Mark just continued, um, to, with, with the other folks that he had, you know, had joined the company to, um, innovate and develop, uh, new products and solutions for, for that industry. Um, yeah. so at the core of the business has always been this, um, product innovation um, identity. Uh, and so, and that's who Mark was. And so 
Mark had uh, a, you know, a pretty large family, four sons that came into the business and, and were a big part of running the business throughout the next several decades, 60s and 70s and 80s. And, and uh, I would say hallmarks of those decades were, you know, more product innovation, um, uh, product launches um, continue to kind of um, grow the, the product line, if you will. And, and it just went through this kind of huge boom. And uh, <sighs> Mark grew out of his grew out of his uh, his, uh, you know, meager start out of his garage and eventually moved out to Annandale, Minnesota, where he built, uh, uh, built a facility to, to house his business. And, and the thing just continued to take off and uh, grow uh, more and more and expand. The, the family, the sons um, uh, started to take on a more prominent roles in the business and, and really uh, take the business from, um, you know, its humble beginnings into this um, very strong kind of uh, brand recognition stalwart in the HVAC industry that it is today. Um, so the 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 eighties and nineties uh, into the into the two thousand um, two thousand saw kind of um, a shift from uh, family ownership to uh, employee ownership, and so there was a pretty significant transition uh, in the late two uh, thousands from the Keemer family to the um, to the employees uh, and from wow. Employee ownership, and so really cool because you know, as we might talk about here uh, in the next segment or two, is is it really establishes the culture of the business uh, as it moves into the you know early to mid to later parts of the of the two thousands and to where we're at today. So this idea of uh, employee ownership or an ownership mentality is with the company because it it literally is is uh, you know a, a a model that's based on what was first a family owned business and then turned into an employee owned business. And so, but, but I would say, you know, if you look at the beginnings from the early beginnings to where we're at today, it's been a, a, a company that's been, that's been um, rooted in, in product innovation and solutions. Mm -hmm. It's core. That's our identity. Um, there's been a very uh, loyal uh, following uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, end user side of our business and the, you know, the trade pro side of our business that has been uh, second to none. And, and I'm, you know, not kidding you when I say that it's a very strong uh, brand loyalty that's been built over the years because of kind of this idea of being um, proud of, of making a product and using that product, um, you know, the way that it's what it, that was intended. So really cool business um, yeah. with uh, a lot of legacy and, and, um, you know, I think our job is to try to um, continue that that legacy. Maybe keep an eye on the on the history of the uh, of the past of the company as as we look forward. And so, um, look forward to talking about that a little bit. Well, my dad was a general contractor, and I know when I first met John and Rebecca, um, and I saw Malco, I was like, oh, I know those tools because um, he we we grew up under metal roofs, and. Um, so I think it is, it's such a strong brand. Um, it's really kind of what I see is a lot of times really in the heartbeat of the country of all the craftsmen and women who are out there. Um, and I, I have to say, I, I love that story about those first inventions because those are tools that everyone uses today. And to think those came from Malco. So Rebecca, when you look at this rich history and over the company, that has to be exciting to be able to really continue to talk about it, to educate, to share this rich history. Yes, I would agree. You know, there is so much work that was done by my predecessor and the predecessor before them to really instill the values and Melko's culture and how it appeals to people outside of the four walls in Annandale, Minnesota. You know, as part of our um, EOS traction, our, our vision traction organizer, you know, as, as an organizational um, platform to optimize our business, not only the business, but our people, you know, we've identified training as a, as a key component to our success. And that didn't come, that didn't come from me, that came from programs that already existed across Malco. There are so many resources for individuals who are visiting our site and programs that support the promotion of those resources, as well as the promotion of the entire trade pro journey and the industry of 
roofing, siding, and gutters, HVAC, building construction trades at large. You know, we have a head of the class program that any educator who may be listening to this is familiar with. We recognized you know, hundreds of students um, all across North America and the programs that they're in. We also have national programs that celebrate uh, the knowledge and the skill set of those trade pros as part of our trade pro of the year for HVAC and building construction. And more recently, we introduced a new program to bring our distributor partners into the fold of recognition by announcing our counter person of the year, which is really intended to celebrate the, the staffing and the personnel within our distributor partner locations, who just does a really, really great job, not only upholding Melco's values, but understanding the, the value of the trade pro, how to use the tools, and just being an ambassador in general to the building construction industry. And so being making, uh, uh, making sure we're recognizing those counter people as well. Um, you know, I mentioned, you know, EOS traction, kind of our VTO, but, you know, if there's, if there's anything too around the training and the history that, that Rich has to bring to the conversation over the last few years, you know, I'll turn it back over to him to, to speak towards, you know, EOS traction and just how we're bringing the brand outside of our, our four walls and really doubling down on our efforts to our distributor partners and trade pros. I, you know, I love that. I want to go to Rich because we also have implemented EOS in our small little company of Roofers Coffee Shop. And so I love this topic. I love talking about it. Um, so please share a little bit about what you're doing. And just for everyone listening out, out there, this is Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's from the book Traction. Um, it is an amazing thing. So Rich, I would love you to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I actually can see over your shoulder there. You've got a yeah, few <laughs> on the shelf, so good for you. Yeah, so entrepreneurial operating system, uh, Gino Wickman, um, uh, ingenious uh, operating system that was uh, designed and developed to basically do three things, in my opinion. Um, increase focus, increase uh, or help with discipline, and, and be able to achieve some accountability in your business. So yes. I think that's it's its goals is to try to um, improve those three things, focus, discipline, and accountability. And so it, and I think it does a good job of doing that because it kind of prioritizes and organizes your business. Um, there's a, a few kind of famous quotes within the, the principles of the, of the EOS that um, kind of speak to the whole thing. And it, and one of them that I really like is that, that it, EOS kind of teaches um, that you need to give yourself time to work on your business and not always be in it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us, um, you know, that come from these op entrepreneurial kind of backgrounds or spirit um, enjoy being in the business, right? Because it's a part of why we're here. And so yeah. we can get caught sometimes, you know, not stepping back and looking at the the bigger picture or the uh, the things that are, that are really important. So in traction, they call those things rocks and those things are, those rocks are priorities every quarter to get done. And and just kind of to let you to it lets you move the noise away um, and focus on the things that are really critical to to moving your the ball forward. So, um, so I I've been uh, lucky enough to kind of be a, be a part of EOS or Traction at two different businesses now, and so okay. um, cut my teeth learning the system at, at my previous employer, and then took that opportunity to deploy it here uh, at Malco. And and I got to tell you, it's just a home run of, uh, of, of events because, you know, the other, and I'll just kind of maybe close with this, the other, the other kind of, um, you know, one of the other key things to this is that it, it, it sets up this concept of small wins. I'm a big believer in yeah. you know, small wins versus big splashes. And, you know, if you have a big splash, great. It's a part of the, hopefully it's a part of the plan, but it, you know, the small wins are really what turns the flywheel, if you will. And, and traction does a really good job of letting you just you know figure out what those small wins are by celebrating rocks for example um which are just you know things that you you decided are priorities that you need to accomplish in a given quarter um so it gives you a chance to not only name them prioritize them but then celebrate them every quarter and allow everybody to kind of join in on that on that celebration so yeah it's a it's a very simple yet very profound set of principles that i think uh really help you increase those three things, focus, discipline, and accountability. It does. I, I just finished 
from all of our one-on-ones, like I said, we're a very small company, but to be able to talk to every single employee and talk and uh, the word accountability came up and we just rolled it out to our employees this year. We kind of, the year before was working just the leadership, getting ready and stuff. And boy, it's made, a, everyone loves it. It's such a huge difference and it goes to the culture. I mean, it supports the culture and builds it up. You know, what's amazing about it too, is that one of the things that's amazing about it is, you know, you talk about some of these words have, have um, sometimes can have some, some connotations that people are like, well, you know, don't, don't talk about accountability in your business. And, you know, it's, it's actually the direct opposite. We find it at Malco, our, our associates, they, they want to be accountable to stuff. Matter yeah. of fact, they're driven by it. So, mm-hmm. you know, another one of those famous phrases in, in traction is, you know, what's your number? And, you know, we feel like everybody has kind of some, some, uh, things that, that resonate with them as it relates to their number, quote unquote. And, and we find that we couldn't get to those numbers fast enough when we started to, to roll this system out to our folks. They were like, what's my, what's yeah. my contribution? What's my number? And it's just, you know, I think, uh, I think it's okay to talk about results and, and accountability yeah. because, you know, I think if your culture's sound, you've got a, a team that's, that's looking to, to knock the walls down. And, and this, this system just, you know, allows you to do that in, 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 in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the optics and the visibility around yeah. uh, accomplishing these things. I, I do too. I mean, I've found it to be great. And Rebecca, I, you know, kind of talking about culture because I, it's, it's so important. And having been in with Malco being such a strong part of the trades for so long, there's a special culture about the trades, right? About HVAC, about metal, about roofing. Um, but I am just taken by what you all have said about being employee owned, going from family to employee owned, which I just think is one of the ideals. Rebecca, how tell us a little bit about that, just about that that EOS and that employee owned culture that you have all um, that, that has been created and must and and now you are promoting. Yeah, I thank you for asking. You know, as as being the the newbie, it has been really rewarding to join a company using EOS. Um, I think a lot of businesses try to set up a lot of these things, and they're coded as milestones or you know quarterly goals. But there's not that same level to to use the same keyword, right? A callback to the accountability. So it's been really refreshing to realizing the company goals for Malco in the in the framework that is EOS traction. You know, regarding the the ESOP and the employee ownership, um, you know, it is it is a one hundred percent employee owned company. Um, I found it interesting seeing um, a few other companies in the Midwest, you know, where they really do, they, they promote their, their ESOP, they promote their employee ownership, but many may or may not be 100% employee owned. And when I joined, I thought that that was something that was really important to make sure we communicated as an American company and as 100% employee owned, because I believe that those values that we feel at Melco are very um, relatable to the trade industry and to the trade pros, building construction professionals. And I just really feel that how we're, you know, walking the walk and talking the talk is is just really important. And it's not only part of the brand in part of a a marketing, you know, kind of campaign or spiel, but it, it really is who Malco is, who we are, and the the type of face that we present when we're speaking externally to all of our partners and customers. Yeah. And it seems like it's obvious too that that just, like you said, taking it out of the four walls. I really love that expression, Rebecca. And, um, and you mentioned earlier about, you know, the educators, what you're doing with teachers and the head of the class. Um, and that's where I met John and that's where actually I was able to get involved with all of you was with skills USA and metal construction association. And so it's, it, to me, it was like, okay, they're really walking the talk and they're really going that. So Rich, I would love you kind of your thoughts on career technical education, this whole, the CTE movement and the fact that you've been doing it. Yeah. I mean, this isn't just something like it's a new shiny object. You guys, this is really part of your core. Yeah. So, um, and, and uh, I'll say that um, I, I, we're blessed with Rebecca being here because it's a passion of hers too. And I, I can tell just um, early on with, with some of the um, energy and projects we're working on. That, so it, it's a nice, there's a million reasons why it, it's a great fit and that's just one of them. So anyway, um, 
So we have a, a program, I guess, initiative within Malco called Look Good, Feel Good, Do Good. Um, the last part of that, Do Good, is really all about giving back. And um, we've done, uh, and, and in a deliberate way, an intentional way, uh, in a focused way. Uh, and so we do a lot of things in the community um, um, in terms of trying to do good and give back, um, which I won't go into detail here. Um, but another part of doing good is to try to give back to the um, you know, to the trades that support who we are. Right. And so mm -hmm. our, the trade groups, the building trade groups are, um, are the, our customers, there are, there are end users, there are partners, uh, and everything we do, um, like literally everything we do is designed around, um, making, you know, making their jobs easier or making their jobs mm -hmm. uh, safer or more efficient. Um, and so, um, some of those opportunities are, um, and Rebecca's, you know, naming a few of them are the occasions that we have to reinvest, um, in those, in those people, uh, you know, people matter, right. At the end of the day, that's what this whole thing is about, in my opinion. And, um, our job in that relationship is to try to, um, uh, invest in it. And sometimes we invest with, uh, our time. Sometimes we invest with our products and, you know, sometimes we invest with our, with our resources and, um, however we're doing it, um, it's with the, you know, the same goal, which is to advance the, uh, advance the cause, um, at the, at, you know, with the trade pro, um, and, uh, somehow, you know, impact the development of, uh, their journey. And so, you know, one of the couple, uh, the few that we've been doing, you know, for a while ahead of the class, uh, stands out as one of those, um, um, programs that we have spent a lot of time in. And I'll tell you, they're popular. You know, we go to these, um, you know, various trade shows or skills USA is a great example. And you know, the, the, the young folks that come up to us, um, you know, with a new Malco backpack on and, yeah. and a Malco cap, um, and tell us that they got those from the, you know, they won their, you know, they were nominated for their, you know, by their instructor or teacher as the, um, as the head of the class. And, and they're just, um, genuinely excited about the fact that, uh, a company like Malco uh, is investing in their future. So, and I'll say it goes, you know, to tie back to the beginning of the discussion, it goes all the way back, um, you know, all the way back to the beginning of the, of the business and its founding. It's always been about giving back. Um, we mentioned, you know, employee ownership and I'll tie these two things together, kind of employee ownership and our, and our trade pros. Um, it's, it's about, you know, investing in, in, in giving back to them so that the family from the very beginning decided that it was going to give its company, um, yeah. the company that it founded and blood, sweat and tears poured into to develop, it gave it to the, you know, gave that business, um, to it's, to the employee owners, just like we're giving our time, energy and resources to, um, the folks that are in the field working every day to make their lives better. So it's a core of our business. Um, we're going to continue to invest in it. Rebecca's working on some things right now that are exciting that will expand our reach. Um, you know, into other organizations and, and, uh, I'll tell you, it's real. Um, it's, it's walk the talk kind of stuff for Malco. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, with what you're doing also in metal roofing and now what we're doing together at roofing, uh, with the roofing industry overall and with the tools and every, how important that is, Rebecca, what are, you know, as you're looking at that and I, and I, you know, I want to tie this back together like you did earlier with between the education and then with the distributor partners, because first of all, I, I have to say, I love the fact that you celebrate counter person of the year. Uh, I've been in many distributors uh, many times and I unsung heroes, unsung heroes. So I think it's just so cool that you do that, you know, as putting all that together and really looking at how you are, I mean, so branding it from the minute they get out of school all the way through their careers. Talk a little bit about that and some of the new initiatives, some of the new things you want to continue doing. Yes. I mean, there is really a lot of emphasis that already has been paved for me to, to stay the course on, but also room for us to continue to grow. And a lot of our focus and marketing throughout the next year to two years is going to be on that entire customer journey. And your know, customer journey in a marketing sense is is really used as you know centric to business, to, to growth, to, you know, revenue growth, namely, but 
along the lines when I mentioned customer journey, it is also inclusive of those things that are important for the business, but that are also important more broadly to the support of the customer journey from the minute they choose to enter a trade to the minute that they decide to exit. And whether that is because they need to be cross-trained, they need to have soft skill training, they need additional tools, uh, new tools, you know, innovation brought to them to make their lives easier, all the way through people who are making decisions to invest and begin their own business. So really it is a broader, it is broader brush to the customer journey that we are approaching. Um, you know, and I, I would say as well, as far as how we're looking at that customer journey and combining it all and wrapping it into to traction and to the employee ownership is, you know, Melco being a, a learning and innovative company is, is also acknowledging that innovation does come from, from anywhere and from anyone. Um, and that is, is really a, a, an earmark in how we go about creating new products and new initiatives for Malco and how we think about those new products and initiatives, how they touch our distributor partners and our trade pros. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we consistently get field feedback when John is at uh, yeah. Skills USA and Rich joined him last year. We were just at MetalCon where we saw you face to face mm -hmm. in our booth. Yeah. But you know, we're soliciting field feedback. We are always open to new ideas. In fact, we just had a new idea contest and awarded a first and second place winner. That first place winner, that contractor, he's going to be joining us in our booth at AHR. And he is so excited to be to be winning, he said, I yeah. never win anything, but also to be recognized as as a person who who not only had a good idea, but is is integral to the continued innovation for his field as a contractor trade pro for HVAC. Um, you know, we we promote the new ideas all the time and that innovation internally, externally, from the field, from a distributor, from a trade pro, from somebody just entering to you know, making a decision to exit, it, it's coming from all different places. And and again, as Melco being a learning, listening, and innovative company, it's we're really open to hearing all of that feedback. It's innovation is coming from from all these places that we that we play in and that we have presence in, in you know, on a national and global level. Yeah, it really shows. I mean, you are listening and hear the voice of the customers from the minute they get out of school through their whole journey. To me, that is incredible. And I can't wait to meet the gentleman, um, the contractor who won the contest and see those new. So I know you do, you, you get product idea submissions, you have your awards. What is some of the inspiration? I mean, you're still, you, you already said you started out as an innovative company and that's what you're doing today. So that is really the focus. What are some of the newer tools that our roofing contractors and HVAC folks and uh, metal roofing com um, companies would be interested in. So, Rebecca, why don't, you, why don't you kind of start? Tell us some of those new tools that are out there. Yeah, so some of your listeners, if they were at IRE last year or if they were able to visit with Malco in the booth recently at MetalCon in Las Vegas, saw a variety of new metal roofing tools that Malco is introducing to their uh, portfolio that includes single station modular benders, two station fixed benders, single and double station uh, discs or hammers, as well as seamers and cutters that are power assisted. So we just are continually you know, releasing product to um, enhance and simplify mm -hmm. that trade pro who is in the roofing, siding, and gutter industry. Um, we also have a variety of products that are launched that are anticipated to serve both HVAC and RSG equally, and some of them have recently you know, won some really great awards, a Pro Tool Innovation Award for our MC12L, which is our offset SNP. Um, that was that was really exciting launch this year, as well as something more specific to your audience. You know, our adjustable siding gauge also won a Pro yeah. Tool Innovation Award, and in general, uh, recognition from the AHR uh, group for HVAC and excellence in hand tools. So, you know, aside from these new products we have launched this past year and the year previous, we've got some great things coming up on the roadmap, as well as, you know, just some real classic 
products too. You want to talk about a history of of innovation. You know, one of our top sellers to the RSG market and to HVAC is our TSHD, which is the the turbo shear. That is that is yeah. a line that is celebrating twenty years of innovation. There's, I believe, nine other turbo shear, turbo crimper, you know, turbo <laughs> products that fall yeah. under that for a variety of different materials. I mean. 20 years uh, expanding upon uh, a category that's been really, really successful. Same thing with our, you know, building construction C-Rex line, as well as our Andy, uh, you know, sub brand. So just continuing to bring, you know, not only new products to very, very popular lines, but brand, brand new, you know, high level launch products to to the RSG market, as well as, you know, more broadly, like I said, to, to building construction with the use case is justified across all of those different all industry sectors. That's the thing. And there's nothing better than tools. I have to tell you, we celebrate tools every day here. Um, Rich, can you, I, I would just love it for you to um, kind of add and just bring us to a conclusion here on, on the innovation, the innovation part and the voice of the customers and really listening to what they need and how that's coming and how important that is to your overall culture. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll um, give it a shot. So, you know, we talked early on about, uh, in, in, you know, as part of our history walk, um, you know, the founding of the business and then the fact that it was a sheet metal business uh, uh, product line and, uh, it, you know, which was predominantly in the HVAC industry. And, um, you know, but about halfway through that, that endeavor, you know, from 1950 to today, um, the building trades have become, a, a, you know, a significant part um, of, of our business and specifically the roof, side and gutter, you know, elements of those building trades, like Rebecca has been kind of talking about, you know, we, we, we kind of think of ourselves as people, you know, as a company that kind of makes tools that, you know, kind of cut, bend and shape and fasten sheet metal, um, yeah. whether that's sheet metal in an HVAC duct system or a sheet metal on a roof somewhere, or, um, that that's the idea, right? Is that we're, we make tools that, that, uh, work, that works with uh, that, you know, those kinds of products. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so this new product line, um, the vendors and, and cutters and seamers that, uh, that we're, um, showing at various shows, um, currently, you know, is, is more of that, right. We're cutting, yeah. bending, seaming, rolling, um, um, uh, sheet metal for metal roofs, um, in a way that's innovative. And so, yeah. um, we're going to continue to, you know, I was talking earlier about small wins and, and, uh, we're going to continue to just kind of move inch forward on, on product innovation that, um, you know, might come in the form of, of fasteners, you know, fasteners is a big part of our business. Yeah. Um, you know, the, you can't walk into a house with a, uh, a sheet metal system of duct work with most likely without a, a Malco zip bin holding it together, um, which is <laughs> of fasteners, which is amazing. I was down in my basement two days ago with a heating contractor and, you know, looked up in the air. There it is. There were, there were several zip and zip and screw fasteners uh, holding the system together. So it's just ironic, but, um, you know, fasteners are, you know, we, we, we have a, um, a superior technology as it relates to our fastener system and, mm -hmm. and, uh, utilizing that, um, at various applications, uh, in the roofing business makes a lot of sense. So, um, exploring ways to do that, um, is probably, you know, one of, if not, uh, close to the top of the list. But it's it's just expanding um, on you know existing core portfolio products, um, extending into some adjacencies that make sense for us that 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 kind of lend itself to those applications, uh, and then you know we have a spirit about us too that likes uh, that I I, I um, refer to or is pretty popular right now talking about it, but it's been a part of our our core for a while, and that's a growth mindset. So we're not. You know, we're being vigilant about things that uh, we could add to the business that that mm -hmm. would make sense for the the end user customer that we're that we're supporting. And so, you know, those kind of three different scenarios of things um, are are where our you know focus is, innovation focuses over the next you know decade uh, and yeah. beyond. So, and, and what's cool about all of that, what I just said, is that you know that is that's not new for this business, right? This is that's not like we're deciding to get into that business, right? This is. This is stuff we've been doing for 75 years and we're going to continue to do for another, you know, 75, uh, if we have anything to say about it. So, so yeah. Right. I love it. I have to tell you, I, 
I have loved all this. I, I actually, I told you this at the beginning, but I had listened to some other podcasts that you both have done. Um, they're great. You have such a rich company that I am just so happy we're, is part of um, Metal Coffee Shop and Rivers Coffee Shop and that we're able to share all this information. So um, one last quick thing, Rebecca. Um, I know, I know they can find all this information on your directories on Rufus Coffee Shop and Metal Coffee Shop because we're putting all kinds of stuff. But where if people want to go out and say, I want to buy some of these tools or I want more information on the educators' resources, head of the class, um, where should people go? So the first great place to go and start investigating and looking around to learn more about Melco and more about our programs and our products is to visit us at melcotools.com. Uh, from there, if you're looking to find a distributor, find an online uh, e-commerce e-tailer, we've got a buy now button on every single product that we have in our portfolio that connects you directly to your nearest distributor uh, brick and mortar or to your online store. We also have a variety of things that are going to get us out of our building, out of the state of Minnesota. Um, I don't know if going to Chicago at the end of January is, is much of a change for us, but we will be at AHR in Chicago at the end of January. So you can visit us at booth S7744. And awesome. then after that, we will be at IRE in hopefully a little bit warmer place in Vegas <laughs> at the beginning of February. And you can visit us at 6728 for the booth number. And then just in general, right, we've got another podcast that we've done with Riffers Coffee Shop. Yes. There's this podcast. There's the Building Science HVAC podcast that we did with True Tech Tools. I mean, there's a lot of different ways for you to listen, connect, engage, shake our hands. You know, we're going to be available on out there in, in Q1 and beyond in 24. Yeah, exactly. And like we said, we saw each other at MetalCon. Um, you also, we have all this information on the directory for Malco on both Rivers Coffee Shop and Metal Coffee Shop. So Rich, Rebecca, thank you so much for being here today. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you Heidi. Heidi. Thanks for having us. Love doing these. Thank you. So much fun. And thank you all for listening. This is the kind of stuff, I mean, you got to check it out. These are the kind of tools that will change your business, will make your employees so happy. Um, plus, it's a family culture, just like most of the roofing industry is. So check it out at, on the directories on both Rivers Coffee Shop and um, Metal Coffee Shop. And be sure to check out all the podcasts under the Read, Listen, Watch, and, um, Navigation under Roofing Road Trips. Also on your favorite podcast channel, be sure to subscribe and set those notifications so you don't miss a single episode. We'll be seeing you next time on Roofing Road Trips. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and leave a review. Thanks for listening. This has been Roofing Road Trips with Heidi from theroofersconfishop.com.